Bonnie from the Spirit of Tasmania. It's been three years. <laughs> Doesn't feel since, like three. <laughs> oh, it's crazy since we're on here last and came to Tassie. Literally feels like yesterday we came and did the Overland track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we're back. We're actually, this is not a paid video, but we're doing a job with the Spirit of Tasmania over on Instagram. So that's the reason we're here. We have just arrived. We left Melbourne, or Geelong, <laughs> so it's now departing from Geelong, <laughs> um, at 11.30 last night, and it's currently 9.30, and we've just docked in Devonport. Yeah. So, it got a little bit rough overnight, um, <laughs> kind of woke us up, they, the captain, or, captain? Yeah, yeah captain. Um, said there was predicted three to four metre swell, um, so I'd say we got that, because it would kind of go up and down and like crack every time the ship dropped sort of thing. Everything was creaking, kind of woke us up, stirred all up a little bit. But that's all right. Attention passengers, this announcement is for passengers who walked on board. The gangway is now being secured, and you can disembark back down there. So yeah, we bring our vehicle on obviously, which is great because we could pack everything in Impala, which is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we actually, we didn't bring Matt's car with the camping set up. We've got mine, so we're gonna be staying in accommodation this trip. We've got seven nights in Tassie, plus a night either way on the ship. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Our first stop is Mole Creek Caves, which we're gonna go do today. Yep. And then we're driving up to Cradle Mountain for three nights, which is gonna be really nice. And we're also gonna be there for my birthday, which is exciting. <laughs> so very much looking forward to it, and we can't wait to show you around. Tazzy dear. Ah, you like Tazzy? Good morning, day two in Tazzy. We ended up going to the caves yesterday at Mole Creek. We did the Mara Cooper cave. We ended up going one at a turn, like one at a time, um, so that Harlow didn't have to go in because he cracked it at Janola Caves in the Blue Mountains when we went last time, as you would have seen if you watched those vlogs. So anyway, one at a time, which is fine. It's a shame we couldn't go together, but yeah, the cave was really good. Um, not as many crystals as like a lot of the other caves we've been to. It was kind of like more spread out and like, yeah, not as many. But it was cool because it followed an underground river which goes through the caves and glowworms. That's the main reason we went there. Um, the glowworms are really, really cool. And I think I said the caves were 430 million years old, something ridiculous. So it just blows our minds. Every time we go to caves like that, it's just like in the middle of like farmland or like just somewhere so unexpected that you wouldn't even know all these caves exist under the ground there. So anyway, that was good. Would recommend for the glowworms, definitely. And then we drove up to Cradle Mountain to the Discovery Parks and we're staying here for the next three nights. Just in like a two bedroom cabin. I'll give you a room tour now. It's a quick little cabin tour. We've actually got a fireplace, which is so nice. <laughs> Such cozy vibes. Even driving into Cradle Mountain, it was like starting to rain. I was like, typical. <laughs> But yeah, it's basically just a basic cabin, full kitchen, which is good because we're here for three nights. Lounge and TV. So yeah, we kind of wanted somewhere that was self-contained. We can cook if we need to, save a bit of money on food and stuff. And yeah, have the fridge. So it's two bedroom. One. And two. And bathroom, which is pretty basic, but it'll do the job. Tell you what. Accommodation in Crater Mountain is very expensive, also another reason <laughs> why we decided to stay at the Discovery Parks. And then we basically just had an early night last night because we were exhausted from not a lot of sleep on the ship. <laughs> Mainly because it left at 11.30, so by the time we actually got to our room and like settled Harlow and all that, which took ages, <laughs> um, yeah, we didn't get that much sleep because we had to get up and get brekkie before we get off the ship as well. So we were very tired last night, so we got an early dinner 
early bird, what we tried for, but Harley didn't want to sleep. And anyway, this morning we're up fresh. We are packed. Matt's got a new hiking bag, which I'll show you now. So we've packed that because he wants to try it out. We'll take Harley in the baby carrier and we're going to go do some nice walks. Um, we're aiming for Dove Lake, maybe Hanson's Peak, Marion's Lookout. Not sure. We're going to go to the visitor centre. The good thing about this Discovery Park is you can literally walk across the road to the information centre, which is where you can get the shuttle, um, which goes down to Dove Lake and all that. So we'll go there, suss out the tracks and um, let you know, take, us with it. take you with us. We caught the shuttle bus into Dove Lake where we began our hike. Our plan was to hike up to Hanson's Peak and continue the circuit around to Ranger's Hut and Lake Wilkes before descending back down and joining onto the Dove Lake circuit. We weren't sure exactly how long this would take, but we allowed ourselves around six hours. We were advised there were some steep sections and weren't sure if we'd make it with Harlow, but we decided to give it a go and just turn back if it was unsafe. The views from Hanson's Peak were incredible and reminded us of being at Marion's Lookout three years ago. We continued on as the weather was starting to get worse and went home to check out Ranger's Hut. So we found another little emergency survival hut. I haven't quite found the name of it yet, <laughs> but we'll read some information and let you know. So we just come out to the Waldheim Chalet. Um, it's basically an old chalet. There's now a new accommodation here where you can stay too. But it's an old chalet where Gustav Weindoffer uh, basically came, ended up living here by himself even through the winter and basically established the Cradle Mountain Lake Sinclair National ah! Park and did a lot of work to make it a spot, um, get the road put in to come here and just basically had guests come and stay at this chalet back in like 19, from 1909, he started coming here and building the chalet. So pretty crazy. It has, I'm pretty sure it's been burnt down in fires and this has basically been re reconstructed to look very similar to what it was. But it's incredible to think that back then, yeah, he would just live out here by himself in the chalet and try and attract visitors from around the world basically to come and see how beautiful Cradle Mountain is. So. Definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. You can, it's just a short walk down from Ronnie Creek where the overland track starts and the shuttle uh, stops there as well. So it's easily accessible. So we finished up at the Waldenheim Chalet and now we've just continued to walk basically. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get the shuttle back to somewhere else to do some short walks but we thought let's just continue the, I think it's called the Cradle Boardwalk or something. I basically, think so. Yeah. You can basically go all the way from the Cradle Mountain Visitor Centre to Dove Lake. So we've jumped back on at Ronnie Creek and then we're going to walk back up to, well potentially the whole way, <laughs> um, at Snake Hill and then uh, the interpretation centre where the Peppers Lodge is and then it continues on to Cradle Mountain, so that uh, visitor centre. So we'll see how we go. If we get tired, we'll just jump on the shuttle bus and Hit your ride home. <laughs> make our way back. Um, it runs like every five to ten minutes, so it's super easy. But this boardwalk's actually beautiful and it follows like, yeah, one of the creeks or rivers and... Just like, a nice walk. Yeah. yeah. Nice and flat, nice and easy. The next stop on our Tasmanian road trip was a two-night stay at the Corinna Wilderness Village where we stayed in an off-grid, gorgeous old miner's cottage. So we're staying in cottage number seven, which is Louise. Just walked in. It is so much nicer than I expected. I don't know why I didn't really. I expected it to be quite old, but it's actually quite modern. It's so nice. Bathroom. Oh, there's a little back deck by the looks. That's so cute. Oh, that's 
들어요. 이번에 우리 워크 투 레인, 그리고 계속 우리의 계획을 하고 있는 파이먼 리버 크루즈. 이 크루즈는 예쁘고 좋고 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 <laughs> oh my god, your shoes! <laughs> This place literally felt like the edge of the earth and was pretty cool to see. We walked back to our boat where we enjoyed the included lunch before it departed to return us back to Corinna. Although it was a shame it rained all day, the low clouds created a beautiful mist between the trees and made it feel like we were getting the true Tasmanian wilderness experience. So we're back from the Pyman River cruise. It was actually really nice. Like I said, like with the rain and all that, it just created these really nice. mist all through the like trees and mountains and we did get pretty wet but we just sacrificed our rain jackets for Harlow <laughs> he stayed nice and cozy and dry slept through the rain while we walked which was nice so now we've just got back we're doing the I believe it's the white river track so this is an hour and a half circuit but we're counting on the fact that it's going to take us a lot less because <laughs> normally they do like normally the signs allow for a lot more time than what it actually takes So, fingers crossed because we've only got about 40 minutes till I do the reservation at the Tarkeen Hotel, which is a restaurant here at Karina. Went there last night and it was really, really good food. It's such a cute little place. So, looking forward to that tonight. I'll try and get a few clips for you guys. And then in the morning, we're hiring a kayak. One single kayak because, oh, we're going to slip on tree roots. <laughs> single kayak because obviously we're at Harlow. So we'll just take it in turns and just, yeah, a little activity to do, not to go anywhere in specific. We made it back in 49 minutes. Perfect timing for dinner. We checked out of Corinna and headed north to Trowata Arch, which is a natural rock formation along with a lot of other small caves nearby. It creates a beautiful photo opportunity and is only a 15 minute walk from the car park. When we finished exploring, we drove up to Stanley to see the sunset over the Nut. We went to Jimmy Lane Memorial Lookout and it was pretty cool to see the Nut during golden hour. The next morning, we caught the chairlift up to the top of the Nut to complete the 4.6 kilometer circuit. The Nut is an ancient volcanic plug and rises 143 meters above sea level, so the views from the top were stunning. I couldn't believe how clear and bright the blue water was around Stanley, especially on a sunny day. You can see the Stanley Wharf, huge stretches of beautiful beaches, and even across to Rocky Cape National Park in the distance. So we're currently doing an up walk. Oh my god, there's so many flies. I probably should have put some insect repellent on or something. <laughs> Didn't really expect it though. But yeah, it's a really pretty walk. We decided to take the chairlift up so you can walk. Lazy. Yeah. <laughs> walk or get the chairlift. But you can do it one direction, so we. decided to catch the chairlift up just because we've got Harlow really <laughs> make it a bit easier so yeah it's $12 one way so $24 for us to both come up and we're gonna walk back down because it's the easier option <laughs> with Harlow but yeah the views of the beaches around here are stunning and the walk's really nice itself it's only two kilometers I think 45 minutes so <laughs> definitely worth doing if you're in Stanley So we've just come out to Rocky Cape National Park. It's kind of on the way from Stanley to Devonport where we're going. So we're like, let's have a look. Um, not much of a detour. And yeah, it's really pretty driving in. Like it's quite mountainous, like right on the coast. And then there's quite a few dramatic kind of rock formations in the water and that. So we've come out to the lighthouse. Um, like nothing amazing. I wouldn't be like, oh my God, you have to come here. But if you're driving past, definitely worth a look. Um, So yeah, we'll see if there's anything else interesting here before we head on um, to drive to Devonport. We might stop in Penguin for a look. I think the town's supposed to be pretty cute with like, penguin things everywhere. Harlow's just destroying the place. Yeah, and then tonight we're actually going to go try and see some penguins um, on dusk when they come in. So 
Fingers crossed, we'll see how we go. We drove over to Devonport where we saw the Mercy Bluff Lighthouse and after sunset made our way to Lilico Beach to see the little penguins waddle back to their burrows. We didn't see heaps of penguins, but it was a great experience and it was also free. On our last day, we drove out to Levin Canyon where we walked the 45 minute circuit to Levin Canyon Lookout. We really enjoyed the views here, but we made our way to one last waterfall on the way back to Devonport called Preston Falls. This waterfall was really nice and a bit of a hidden gem. It was also only a short walk from the car park. We then made our way back to Devonport, ready to board the Spirit of Tasmania, which would take us back to Geelong. The thing I love about the Spirit of Tasmania is that it's still part of the journey. Our trip wasn't over and we still had heaps of fun on the way back home. Tasmania, we love you and we'll be back very soon, I'm sure.